What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Portigo and Lens Rentals and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over the Syrup Genie 2 three axis motion control kit, going over all of the different parts and pieces, the cables, accessories, things like that, showing you exactly what comes with this kit and kind of explaining what all of those different things do. And in the second half of this video, I'm actually gonna show you how to assemble it and how to get it running in a three axis move, doing a parallax around an object. So I hope you guys enjoy this one, let's get into it. So starting off with some of the more boring things that come in this kit. Now, because it is two separate pieces, you have the linear slider motor, which is used to do the slide, and you also have the pan tilt head. You get a lot of duplicates of these things. So each kit comes with two USB-C to USB-C cables, and this is gonna be used to power it or run it off of AC power if you wanted to plug it in and not run it off the battery. You're also gonna get two wall adapters, which are USB-C to non-polarized cables. So you get two non-polarized cables to plug both of these little adapters in. And then lastly, you have two USB-C to USB-C USB-A adapters, and these are used to plug in for power as well. So it's kind of just a bunch of different powering options that you have for both the linear motor and the pan tilt head. Moving on to the base of the entire unit and kind of where everything comes from, and that's with the magic carpet slider. Now this is the two foot section here, but it also comes with rails to extend it out to a four foot, and these just thread on, and then you can use some spacers and adapters to get it longer if you wanted to. Now with those rails, it also comes with a kind of adapter piece to add another support so you don't get any sagging in the middle of it and you can have a little bit more structure to the slider at a longer length. The slider part of it also comes with two end caps, which are really great because they have the tie off for the slider motors, which I'll show you when we get into the assembly of that. And they also have some outrigger feet on them with adjustable angles so you can quickly and easily adjust the feet on these to get it level on different surfaces. On the bottom of the slider, you have a couple great mounting options with 3 8 threaded holes, which is just gonna give you some more support if you needed this up higher and you don't wanna use the feet, and you can mount it directly onto a tripod or some other stands. On the bottom of the slider carriage, there's actually a nice little adapter here, which allows you to swap between 3 8 and quarter 20 thread on the top of the plate, and that's super easy to swap out if you wanna put your own head on top of it. Going on to the next thing that we're gonna add on top of the Magic Carpet, we're gonna be looking at the Syrup Genie 2 Linear Kit. Now this is only for the slide movement, the pan tilt head is in a separate motorized device. Now this comes with a couple different things. It comes with a battery, obviously, to power it. We can just throw that right inside, put the cap back on. It also comes with a 90 millimeter QR plate. Now for our purposes, since we're gonna be adding the pan tilt head on top of it, we're not gonna be needing this plate, but if you just wanted to have something with a parallax movement or you wanted to have a ball head or something on top of it where you only need to have the slide action, you can use this QR plate and it comes with two different screws. It comes with a quarter 20 and a three eighths that just pop right into the bottom using this nice little quick release system and now you have a three eighths thread. That pops into the top here. You need to make sure that it's unlocked pull back on the red lever here, which is the safety release, push down and it'll be locked in and you can thread whatever you want to right on top of that, whether that's a pan tilt head or if you just wanna attach your camera directly to it. But like I said, we're not gonna need that for our setup because the bottom of the pan tilt head actually uses the same quick release system to mount directly on top of this linear motor. The other part that you're gonna use with the linear motor is this small little thing called a capstan. Now this has a rope attached to it and there's a small coil in here with a gear that's gonna go on the outside edge over here. And I'll again show you how to set this up in a minute. But basically you're gonna take this, one side of the rope's gonna run over to one end of the slider, the other one to the other end, and you're gonna tie it off and that's how it's actually gonna rotate and move the slider down the track. The kit also comes with two of these Velcro tie-offs which are used if you're not using the magic carpet slider. Our slider already has the tie offs built into it, but if you're using a slider from a different manufacturer, you could use this Velcro strap to add a tie off to either end, and then you can still use this linear motor for the slide. And again, I'll show you exactly how to set this up a little more when we get to the assembly. And then the last part of this to make it a complete three axis motion controlled is of course the pan tilt head. Now there's a QR plate on the top with a quarter 20 and three eighths mounted thread. So you can mount your camera directly to this. All of the motors and everything are internal and there's really no accessories or anything you have to assemble with this. It's all built right into it. The only thing you have to do is add in a battery. But all of your controls you use this little joystick, a little menu navigation and LCD screen and everything is done right on here or in the Bluetooth app. 
Just like all of the other parts in this kit, this is a standalone unit. So you can use this all by itself without needing all of those other parts. So say you wanted to take this and add it onto your tripod to add a remote head for panning and tilting. You can mount it on using the quarter 20 or three eighths thread on the bottom of it. And it also has that QR plate if you want to mount it into the linear motor, which I'll show you in the assembly. So those are all of the different parts and pieces that come in the three axis kit from the magic carpet and the slider, the linear motor, and then the pan tilt head. Next up, let's put all of this stuff together and show you how to get your first motorized control move. The first thing that we're gonna do is grab the magic carpet, and this is gonna be our base and what we're gonna kind of build everything off of. Now, since I'm doing it on a tabletop surface, I'm gonna use the outrigger feet. So if you go to the end of them, you can pull out the lock lever and it'll pop out and then you can adjust it to a specific angle. Do both of these at the same time here. We can adjust that to be probably right about there. Looks good. Lock those down. We'll go to the other end, do the exact same thing. Just pop out the bottom one, pop out the top. Try and get them at the exact same angle. So that means it's gonna be level and it's not gonna be rocking back and forth. As you can see, they're a little bit off here. So I'm gonna stand these other ones up just a little bit to get them in the same position. Perfect, that's solid to me. It's not rocking around at all. If you're not doing it on a tabletop surface, what you're gonna wanna do is mount your quick release plate on your tripod directly to the bottom of these different mounts. So you have a couple different options. If you have two different stands, you can put one on either end for a little more stability, or if you're only using a single tripod, you can mount it right in the center. The next piece we're gonna add on to our slider is the Syrup Genie 2 linear motor. Now this is gonna give us our actual slide movement, so going back and forth along the slider. On the bottom of it, you have a quarter 20 or three eighths, depending if you have the thread adapter in there or not. And on the top of your plate or on the carriage, you should either have a quarter 20 or three eighths. Now, if you wanna swap one of these out, you can either take out the thread adapter or you can change out the screw on the bottom of the carriage. To do that, you're gonna flip it over and on the bottom here, there's a small little pull tab. So you can grab that tab, pull it out, and that'll allow you to pull out this small little adapter. This you can flip over either to your quarter 20 or three eighths, whichever one you need. So we're gonna put it onto the quarter 20 because that's what I have for my linear motor. And then we'll throw this back on top and just start screwing it on. Once you have this screwed on all the way, what you wanna do is make sure that the gear that's sticking out on the side is facing away from you, so that all the joysticks and controls and everything are on the back side of the slider. Now, if yours isn't in the right position, like mine right now, what you wanna do is there's a little wheel underneath the joystick that you can loosen up. That'll allow you to rotate your gear so that it's facing away from you. You have the joystick directly on the back of the slider, and then you can spin that wheel again to tighten it back down. That's how you want it positioned for this setup, and that's how the rope and everything is gonna run on the back. Once you have it in this position, what you can do is go ahead and grab the cap stand, which is this small little gear with a bunch of cabling and rope on it. You're gonna take this and slide it on that gear. There's a couple lines here that line up, twist it, and it'll lock into place. Now you're gonna take the cables, and the one that is on the outside, the furthest away from you, is going to be running on to the right side of the slider, and the other one is gonna be running over to the left. So now follow one of those ropes off to one of the sides. And for this one, it doesn't matter if it's too tight, but what you wanna do is tie it off. So wrap it a couple times around the end of this, and then you can pull it up right through the center and that's gonna lock it into place. If this is a little bit loose, that's not a problem. We're gonna tighten it up when we do the other end. With all of this extra, you can either just tie it up, wrap it around, do something to keep it a little bit more neat and put a rubber band or something on it. I just like to tie it up and tuck it towards the end. Now let's go over all the way to the other side of the unit, and this is where we're gonna to wanna to make sure that this rope is tight as we go around that first time. So make sure you're pulling it nice and snug. We'll wrap it around once, we'll go twice, and then the third time we'll come up right through the center. And again, with all of this extra slack, we can just wrap it up and tie it off however you want to on the end. So once you have this cable set up, if you wanted to test it now before we put the pan tilt head on just to make sure that the battery is charged and everything is working, you can power on the unit with the button on the back. It takes a second to boot up. And then once it's booted up, what you can do is use the joystick to actually navigate back and forth. Now, the one thing you wanna make sure, which I don't have right now, is that it's unlocked. If the slider is locked, it's really gonna strain on these motors and it's not gonna work properly. So make sure you have the slider unlocked and then you can use the joystick to go back and forth along the slider. 
Cool, so this is all working. The next and last thing that we're gonna add onto this is the pan tilt head. And you also wanna grab a battery because this is gonna need a separate battery from the linear motor. Now we're gonna take this and go right onto the quick release plate on the top of the linear slider. Now you wanna make sure that it is unlocked on the side so there's a little lever you can lift up. And then you're gonna hold down the red unlock switch for the quick release. And then you can drop the pan tilt head right in top. Let go of the red lever. And now you can rotate the head around so that your camera is facing in the right direction that you want it to start in. Now, since this is a pan tilt, the actual controls are gonna be moving around quite a bit. They're not gonna stay fixed on the back of the unit. So what you wanna do is rotate so that all of the controls are on the right side. This is gonna make sure that your controls are all the same when you're going up and down. It's actually gonna move it up and down and not be inverted. So we'll move it off to the right here so our camera's facing forward, and then we're gonna lock it down. Over on the left side above these couple USB-C ports and the remote in port is where you actually put the battery. So what we're gonna do is pull off this cap. If you just lift up on it and then pull out, kind of tipping the bottom out, it'll pop right off. Then you can grab a battery and make sure that the contacts are on the back of the battery so they touch the contacts on the pan tilt head. We'll just slide that in there, and then we can go ahead and put the cap back on. And now we're ready to go. We're ready to start programming this move. So you can power on the unit with the button on the side. One thing to remember with this setup is that these are two separate units. You have a linear motor, which is doing the slide movement, and then you have a pan tilt head, which is doing your panning and tilting. Now, because they are two separate units and there's really no connection between them besides that QR plate, which is just a cold QR plate, there's no contacts or anything in there, you're gonna have to control both of these motors separately. Now on the pan tilt head, it's really easy to program a move. You can go in using the joystick to navigate into video. You can set your start and end point. On the slider motor, it's a little bit different and you can't really do that. The only way you can move the slider motors is by either using the joystick on the back or controlling it through the app. Now, if you're really trying to get a three axis movement using both of these together, I would highly suggest doing it all through the app because it makes it super easy and ties these together so you can program one single move instead of them having to be two separate parts. So what I'm gonna do next is go onto the app. I'm gonna go in here, open up the Genie 2 app from Syrup. And right in here, it starts off with this kind of interface where you can create content, community, and tutorial. Obviously, we wanna create some content, so let's click that one. It searches for any sort of devices, so as long as both of these are powered on, they should be putting off a signal that this app is gonna be able to connect to. And there's two of them here, so we're gonna to connect to both of them. We'll start with the tracking slider, that one's connected. We'll do the pan tilt head, that one's connected. It also tells you the firmware on both of these, so we know both of them are up to date and ready to go. So the next thing that we're gonna do now that we are connected to both of them, we can hit the back button in the top left. That's gonna get us back to our create content. And in here, this is where we can start programming some moves. So we can do live drive. So if you just wanted to control it on the fly and have it be live, you can set keyframes, which is what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna show you how to set all those different axes. You can also have a couple different options for doing panoramas, time lapses, things like that. So let's go into the keyframe mode. And there's a bunch of preset ones in here, but we're just gonna go and create our own new one. So we're gonna hit new setup over on the left. And this gives us two different joysticks. One of them is for our pan tilt head on the left. So we can tilt up or down. We can pan left or right. And then on the other side, we have our slider, which is just gonna give us back and forth on the slide itself. So let's go all the way to one side of the slider with the right joystick. As you can see, our start one is spinning around and that means that we're adjusting the start position. So let's have this pan towards the middle here. I would tilt up a tiny bit. That looks good. So once we have our start position and what our framing is that we want, we're gonna hit end, and now we're adjusting the end keyframe. So let's go all the way to the other side of the slider. That looks pretty good. And then we're gonna pan back to the left. So we're basically doing a parallax move where it's gonna be panning to the left as we're moving to the right. We can also adjust our tilt if we need to change any framing, if we're doing like a product or something like that. And then once we're done, we can hit the end button again. And now we're ready to start running this move over and over again. So we can hit done. It's gonna show us where all our keyframes are and reset the slider back to position one. And in this window, you have a couple different options for easing in and out. So if you want the transition to be slower from stopping and going, you can change those in here. You can also change it from loop mode. So if you want it to just run through it once or if you want it to bounce back and forth, you can go into this sort of loop mode where it's just gonna keep repeating it over and over again. So let's do the repeat mode. We're gonna hit okay. 
We're gonna go into the video. We're not doing a time lapse, stop motion. We're doing video, so let's make sure that's okay. And now we can go and hit record. Record means that it's actually going to start doing that movement. If you have this camera hooked up using a remote trigger port as well, that's gonna start the recording on your camera. So that's a pretty neat feature that you don't have to start that separately. So let's just hit record. And as you can see, it's gonna start going through that movement. Now, right now it's happening pretty fast. It's over about a five second period. And if we wanted to slow that down, it's super easy. So let's hit stop on the motor. We can go into our settings here. Let's go up to the record time. If you just tap that, you can now adjust the seconds. So let's say we want this to take 25 seconds. That looks good. So let's hit okay. It's gonna load up and then we can hit the record button again. And now it's gonna go through that move in 25 seconds. And this is gonna be better for those interviews where you want it to just kind of slowly creep throughout a longer shot. So that's basically the entire setup of this unit. You can go in here and you can play with a bunch of different settings and change it around to get it to work for what you need to do. But I hope this video was helpful. Hopefully it got you going on this setup. If you have any questions about the Syrup Genie series, either the pan tilt head, the linear, the magic carpet itself, anything like that, let me know in the comments down below. If this video helped you out, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one.